This famous Russian mystic lost his life on December 29, 1916, amidst rumors of a conspiracy allegedly backed by the United Kingdom to overthrow the monarchy. Welcome back. This is Kronos, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about the death of this mystical, religious, dark figure that was Rasputin. Born in the village of Pokrovskoye, Siberia, Grigory Yefimovich Rasputin went from being a simple peasant to becoming one of the most influential figures of the 20th century. His miraculous ability to cure the heir to the Russian throne, Alexei, of his hemophilia made him a powerful figure in the eyes of Empress Alexandra and Tsar Nicholas II, the rulers of the largest empire in the world at the time. Rasputin's success in healing Alexei earned him the trust and favor of the Tsars, who relied on him to save their son's life in dire situations. Empress Alexandra, in particular, became emotionally dependent on the mystic, which granted him even more power and influence over the royal family. Shortly after Nicholas II left for the front lines of World War I, the fate of Russia was left in the hands of Empress Alexandra, who relied on the guidance of Rasputin and her close friend Anna Virubova. It was a turbulent time for Russia, and Rasputin's influence in the imperial court was crucial to the survival of the royal family. There were several doubts and questions regarding the validity of Rasputin's advice, and one day Felix Yusupov lured the Russian mystic to his palace under false pretenses. Once there, he was offered pastries poisoned with cyanide. But to everyone's surprise, Rasputin did not die. So, Yusupov shot him with the Browning revolver belonging to Dmitry Pavlovich, Nicholas's cousin, thinking that that was the end of it. However, Rasputin managed to get up and escape through the palace's backyard, only to be hunted down and killed by Vladimir Purishkevich, a far-right Duma deputy who shot him twice with his pistol. Rasputin's body was then thrown into the river through a hole in the ice, ending the saga of the notorious mystic. There are many doubts surrounding Felix's version of the events. Russian historian Oleg Shishkin and the British historians Andrew Cook and Richard Cullen suggest that the assassination of Rasputin may have been carried out by none other than the British Secret Intelligence Service, SIS or MI6. The three historians have claimed that there's evidence supporting this theory. The Agents of Petrograd In 1916, the British Foreign Office assigned Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Hoare to lead a mission in Petrograd, the name given to St. Petersburg in 1914 during the Great War. There, Agents Stephen Alley, John Scale, and Oswald Rayner worked in close collaboration. Rayner, a lawyer who spoke Russian fluently and was a friend of Felix Yusupov since they studied at Oxford, reportedly visited the Yusupov Palace several times between October and November 1916, according to William Compton's diary, an English driver in Petrograd. These details strengthen the hypothesis of the SIS's role in Rasputin's murder. Additionally, Scale's daughter Muriel claimed that her father knew he was with those who planned his death, in reference to the end of Rasputin. One telegram and many doubts. The day after Rasputin's murder, Oswald Rayner showed up at Felix's house and stayed there for the next 24 hours. This raises suspicions that the SIS may have had a hand in the crime as hinted in a telegram sent by Stephen Alley from St. Petersburg on January 7, 1917, to John Scale. The message stated that although things didn't go exactly as planned, the goal had been successfully achieved, and that the reaction to the disappearance of the Dark Forces, referring to Rasputin, had been positive. However, 
there was some concern among some Russians about the possible involvement of the SIS in the murder. Rayner was working on resolving these issues and would undoubtedly report upon his return. The message also alludes to rumors implicating two English officers in the murder, which the Tsar mentioned to George Buchanan on December 19th. Buchanan explained that these rumors arose because of Rayner's friendship with Yusupov. The Murder Weapon The mystery surrounding Rasputin's assassination deepens with the disappearance of his autopsy report after the revolution, although some photographs remained. But Dr. Kosorotov, who performed the autopsy, provided important information in an interview in 1917. He revealed that the gunshot wounds to Rasputin's chest and side led to his death within 20 minutes. The autopsy also uncovered a forehead wound that was inflicted by a weapon no more than 23 centimeters away, leaving gunpowder residue on his body. This wound was believed to have been inflicted while Rasputin was lying on the ground. Fast forward to 2004, British forensic pathologist Derek Ponder came up with an intriguing theory. He suggested that the bullet wound to the forehead was from a Webley caliber 455, a weapon exclusively used by the SIS. Andrew Cook has argued that this proves that Rayner was the one who fired the shot, but this theory is considered inconclusive as it is based solely on available photographs. And there you have it, the mysterious death of Rasputin. Whether it was a conspiracy by the British Secret Service or a desperate act of Russian nobility, Rasputin's death will forever be shrouded in controversy and intrigue. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about his life in an upcoming video. Oh, and hey, if you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up and join us by subscribing. It's free. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.